In today's video, we will be looking at the Gigabyte A520M S2H motherboard. So this motherboard is a Ryzen AM4 motherboard and it does support up to the Ryzen 5000 series as well as obviously the 3000 series as well. So today we'll be taking an unboxing of this motherboard and we'll just sort of go through the features and what you have on the motherboard so let's get into it. Obviously starting off here you can see that we have the IO shield obviously fairly basic motherboard so you won't have the integrated IO shield unfortunately but that is what it is the SATA cables are there as well so you get two SATA cables as standard with it there we go. and is there anything on okay and then underneath obviously you just get like the installation guide and uh, quick install guide and sort of languages uh, different languages and what have you as well <laughs> So let's move on to the motherboard. Obviously this is a micro ATX motherboard and let's just sort of go through what you have. So obviously here the 8 pin EPS supplementary power for your CPU and obviously on this side is your 24 pin sort of main motherboard cable for your power obviously. Uh, so we have the AM4 socket as I said. Um, this does actually have, and I'll go into it a bit later, but this does actually have the flashback. So um, if you need to put like one of the more modern CPUs in, maybe like the Ryzen 5600, or even maybe like the Ryzen 4500, you will be able to do a flashback and then obviously get the latest BIOS. Obviously it comes with our standard mountain bracket for our AM4. So this will take basically any AM4 compatible cooler. Obviously the stock cooler or a third party cooler is fine. We have the 4-pin CPU fan uh, connector in the sort of top right-hand corner-ish, as well as two DIMM slots, which I think take up to, I'd say I'd recommend about 3600 speed here, DDR4 obviously this is, DDR4 3600, but I think you can overclock it a lot further than that, but I'll put it below if, if needed. But yeah, you only get the two slots, so I would think that's probably only about 64 gigabytes of total RAM that you can fit in there but again I'll put it at the bottom if not. Just to mention as well obviously we don't have any calling over the VRM so that that is what it is but it's perfectly fine for a very budget board. Now sort of talking about the price we may as well talk about it. Uh, I paid about £70 for this which is a little bit more than you want to but unfortunately AM4 model boards have kind of gone up in price so it, it, it is what it is really you know £70 isn't a uh, fantastic price I would say but I'd say it's more than okay I think once you're getting up to like maybe the 5600 and going further and certainly going towards like the 5700 um, you would want to obviously get a better motherboard really that's probably like an ATX motherboard as well maybe go up to the B550 obviously but the A520 platform it's okay but you won't get the full support for the uh, PCI Express 4 on your graphics card and same with, uh, you won't, we won't get the Gen 4 support for your M.2 either. So not really anything else on the motherboard here. There's no USB-C connection, although there is the USB 3 sort of connector for your front panel, so that's good, obviously. But we have four SATA ports here, which I think are six gigabyte ports, but I'll put it below if not. So that's okay. And then we have our fan header here, and we have a fan header up there. So a total of two fan headers, as well as your CPU fan header, which is actually quite all right, I think, for a budget motherboard. I mean, obviously fan splitters are a thing, so obviously you could use four or five fans with one fan splitter, and you would only need one connection on your, one fan connection on your motherboard. Basically, as I said, so you've got your fan connector there, you've got your USB free front header connector, which is obviously nice. Uh, you have your front panel connectors next to that. Uh, you have a clear CMOS button or a, or a clear CMOS jumper. So you can just jump that if you need to reset your BIOS settings basically. And then you have two USB 2 front panel connectors, but obviously most cases aren't going to come with that now. So it's probably a little bit redundant, although there are some AIOs that actually use that as well. So. They are there if you need them. So then we have a COM port next to that, which again, you're not going to use. 
You also have a TPM port as well, or connector, should I say? But again, you're probably not going to use that. This, is, this actually has TPM already integrated into the motherboard anyway, so wouldn't worry about that. But then, obviously, what you have next to it is your 12-pin RGB as well as your 5-pin ARGB connectors. So that's actually really nice to see, especially for a budget motherboard, that you do have support for addressable RGB as well as the old standard RGB as well. So that's that's nice. And then at the bottom there, we have the audio as well, the audio connector there. So let's just move a little bit further up the board. As I said, there is your second fan connector, right where you'd kind of expect it on the sort of the rear case fan, so I say. So then we actually have a PCI Express 1 port right by where the only M.2 port is. So this M.2 port obviously work off your CPU and from what I know it's Gen 3 only. So if you want if you've got a Gen 4 drive, unfortunately although it will be backwards compatible with Gen 4, unfortunately you won't get the Gen 4 speeds from the motherboard. You only get Gen 3, so Slight limitation. We obviously then have the PCI Express 16 or Time 16 graphics card sort of slot, which is obviously where your main graphics card is going to go. It's a little bit lower on the motherboard there, so you will have to be a little bit careful if you're using a micro ATX case that the graphics card could be very low in the case, and then obviously if you've got the PSU shroud at the bottom, because most PSU, well, most cases have the PSU now at the bottom. So you might have to be a little bit careful how close your graphics card is going to be at the bottom there, but not a big limitation, but it is what it is. And then we have one more PCI Express times one port as well, right at the bottom there, which is probably where you might put like your Wi-Fi card, although you could obviously put your Wi-Fi card at the top one as well, which actually thinking about it more, probably the Wi-Fi card at the top might actually make more sense. So we have two USB 2 ports, which is a little bit redundant now, but obviously there, which is good, but I would like to see USB 3 ports kind of standard on all the rear ports now, but it's fine. And also the PS2 port just below that, but again, kind of redundant, but is what it is. It's kind of a budget board, so you're going to get older connectors, unfortunately. And talking about Mesozoic older connectors, uh, we obviously have our VGA port and our DVI port, which will be fine if you're obviously using the onboard graphics. So if you're using a 5700G or a 5600G on this, that'd be perfectly fine. Obviously, make sure that you're not using the 3200G or the 3400G because that isn't actually compatible with this motherboard or at least not officially compatible with this motherboard. It might work but there's no guarantees. Then we have a HDMI port. So in theory, you could connect up three monitors up to this just using your, the onboard connectors. So that's kind of nice, but it's it's kind of a bit bit of a dated IO, but it is what it is. Then we have our free USB free, I think it's Gen 2 ports, but I'll put it below again just to confirm. And the one which is in white, if you can see that from there, hopefully you can, is for your BIOS flashback, which is your BIOS flash button, which is right by it. So this basically allows you to flash the BIOS so that you can update to the latest BIOS and then it's compatible with all the CPUs rather than just like the early 5000 series. So like the 5600X and the 5800X. So you will get full compatibility if you do update to the latest BIOS without obviously needing a previous gen CPU, which is nice. Then we have our one gigabyte LAN, which is obviously standard. And then we have our standard free audio ports of the pink, green and blue. So probably your mic as well as your sort of uh, headphone port for your green port. So obviously quite standard motherboard in terms of sort of like a budget motherboard. So yeah, I think, I think it will do a decent job for most people for what they're going to need it for. Obviously it is quite a small board as well. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and get a little bit of a better view again. But... It is quite a small board, it only goes up to, well that's probably about 25 centimetres, maybe a little bit further, but, and it's only got six screw connectors as well, so it doesn't go further, like most motherboards obviously will come out to maybe here or something, they'll come out a little bit further, but if you've got maybe a smaller case, that could be perfect, and you know, it, it's going to be usable for most people this, you know, this is a budget option obviously. So I wouldn't say 
you know, don't put like a 59, 50X in it because the VRMs aren't going to cope, obviously. I would say if you are going to put a CPU in here, I'd probably say the 5600 is probably the perfect one. 5600X would be fine. 5700X would be fine. But I think once you get in towards the 5800X, you would want to spend a little bit more and go up, for, go up to a B550 motherboard. Uh, obviously something like maybe like the MSI B550 Gaming Plus motherboard would be perfect and that's obviously an ATX board but obviously there is quite an additional expense to that I think that's about £135 so you would be spending about 65 more pounds but obviously you do get a lot better motherboard so it's it's what you want obviously you know it's, 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 it's your choice what you want to go with with your components but anyway I think I've kind of waffled on a little bit too long with that video hopefully you did enjoy that video and like I say, guys, I, I do apologise again for the lack of videos. I do really want to get a lot more videos out. And I do I do apologise, but there will be more videos come in. There, there is, um, you know, with my financial situation currently, I, I admit I'm a, you know, it's not exactly great where I want to be at the moment. But I am working to get more, to get obviously more money, to obviously buy more products and to to obviously uh, build this channel so if you really do want to support this channel and really help me out the best way you can do that is to obviously like the video potentially share it as well and obviously subscribe to the channel so you see v future videos from me so i hope you like this guys and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys